Oh, g'day. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd put together a bit of a video to compare that rider experience. Uh, having had a Xiaomi M365 for about a year or so, uh, the little white one there up the, up the back, and then uh, in the last week having upgraded to a, a Zero 09. So, um, yeah, just really like the, the M365 has been really good. Um, having clocked up about two and a half thousand kilometers, mainly commuting. Uh, here in Australia, you, they, scooters are illegal in this state of Queensland, not so much many of the others. And um, basically it's about eight kilometers to get there. It's about 22 minutes. Uh, well, actually six Ks to get there, um, so 22 minutes. So the N365 would, would get, get us into, into the city to work and then uh, you charge it up during the day um, and come home. So what we're doing there on that thing is um, about a 20, yeah, 22 minute journey um, and it's not really stock anymore so I've, I've gone through various upgrades in it and basically got to a point where I was looking for more power, more reliability uh, and better ride handling and um, that's certainly what the uh, Zero 09 is, is doing. Um, the Zero 09 was picked up a 22% off sale, like a shingles day thing that they've done at Falcon PEV. So that's out of Singapore and they ship worldwide. The uh, the courier cost about that to Australia, um, $160 or so, and arrived within like five working days. So pretty impressive. Um, starting to see a few of those getting around in, in town now too. So... Um, basically a thousand dollar scooter um, at that opportunity buy but normally they're about uh, 1250 Australian dollars uh, to, to bring in yourself or to buy locally there's many places that do sell them locally for around about uh, fifteen hundred dollars the Xiaomi came in at I think they were the five six hundred dollar deals that were available um, and still sort of somewhat are I've actually spent probably about 500 bucks on top of that, um, doing upgrades such as 10 inch uh, tires, etc. So, the um, at the end of the day, the costs of getting the little one up to speed uh, for a commute, uh, you just yeah, go and buy a 09. So, um, interesting upgrade. A lot of people got M365s are looking for something a little bit better. So, um, yeah, I'll just share the experience that I have with you. So, I might just take you through some of the, um, the parts of it and basically. Um, First thing that I noticed, I'll turn the light on, I if it'll help, um, was you know, the, the handlebars that you normally had on a 365 is about 48 centimeters. Now with the 09, you're going up to 60 centimeters. So immediately you're getting more um, stability um, to handle the ride because you basically your arms are, are wider. Um, you tend not though, to get much more real estate up here to stick your stuff on. So. What I've done with the 365 is um, put on the meat locks um, grips and, and they, they really do help um, with having your hands on the thing. Um, I wouldn't mind doing some meat lock upgrades to the, the Zero. The Zero is sort of very similar in, in shape but they're just not filled out, not as, not as damp as, uh, as the meat locks and I think the meat locks would take you to a little bit more width there as, as well. Um, so the, the bell on it, and then you, you do the swap, you move your um, bell around with the, the handbrake lever, and that just allows that when you apply the brake, you can just do it with two fingers while you've still got your other three on your, on your grips. Um, so in, in there would go a remote for the helmet to indicate and um, turn the, the, the volume up and down on the, on the Bluetooth. So that's, that's that real estate use. On the other side, uh, you've got obviously um, a bit of room to put something in there such as uh, a phone holder, which you know I rarely use, but you can do that. Um, the light that's in it, so the, the light stopped working on the M365. There is a known issue on the uh, on the controller that can cause the, the motor to um, go a little bit haywire and, and the light flickers, and, and that's I think a fuse on. The control that needs to be basically bypassed, etc. It's, it's a known fault. Um, <clears throat> I did, uh, and I guess one of the reasons for doing the upgrade was because the motor died, right? So the M365 motor um, 
tested fine and all that, but uh, just, yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't work. So you, you stick with your three phases onto the test, you spin it, and it should flash lights, and it did all that. Um, but what would happen is that uh, the motor would um, not like to use any more than, say, 200 watts, and it start to buck and, 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 vi and vibrate and stuff. Um, so maybe the windings or something on those has, has had it, but uh, replace the motor. So that's in that 500 of, of consumables that I mentioned, um, and had to sort of get that locally, which was almost 200 bucks. You know, you can buy them 100 bucks on eBay, but anyway, did that, put the motor in, um, and yeah, works. So um, it's had its fair share of issues as well with. Uh, various parts breaking on them, so we all know the latch uh, can go, and and it did. And I did get another one just a temporary to get me by while I waited on one of those nice red reinforced uh, ferry latches that you get in from Russia. So um, the temporary one I had uh, with a magnet um, failed. The, it's not steel test, so um, you can you might be able to see on these that what happens is see how the starting to be shaped on a bit of a curve and that's basically the the pins pulling through putting pressure on it and it's starting to bend and eventually will, will snap so no issues anymore because i've got that 25 dollar part or whatever on there now from russia um two other parts in there as well there's there's a pin that goes through here little hook on it that one snapped um, and then also the, the pins that go through and hold this in um, can also go. So there's like three parts you can fracture. I know Xiaomi now do a steel uh, latch. Um, it doesn't look any stronger, but it, it is uh, made out of uh, steel as opposed to tronesium. Um, but it's a bit hit and miss on, on, on those other two parts, you know, that bolt and the pin. So um, when one goes like the latch, the handlebars will come back on you when the, the bolt the hinge bolt goes um, that will go forward on you um, and then when the when the pins that support the latch go um, it sort of flakes apart as well so the, these things just will vibrate the way out when you're when you're on the ride not really safe I did notice when I got a yeah you know, from one of the reputable suppliers a new uh, hinge bolt they normally the bolts um, sort of beveled in the middle, so it's thinner. And you can see when that where that goes through there, there's a thin thin part in the middle, and that's that's how they sit. When they send uh, the replacement out, they do the uh, a, a bolt that's a full thickness all the way through, and hence why they give you a new one of those because you can't fit your new thick bolt through this thin one. Um, so that's probably fixed up, and yeah, it's really now just probably the the the, the pin or the yeah the bolt that goes um, laterally uh, between that latch um, back into your uh, where your, your round hook is there so um, yeah just really sort of really interesting because you know there's a lot of modifications you can do with with custom firmwares etc there's a lot of resources in communities there's quite a few Facebook groups etc um, and you do that for six months, and then for the next six months, you sort of, oh, I'm just replacing parts here, and other people on those channels are sort of saying, yeah, this is broken, or that's broken, or it's played up. So, yeah, yeah it, it's it's a good way to get started, I guess. So, um, so I'll come back to, to the rider experience now, basically. That's that's our handlebars. Um, with the light, so the, the light that's on the... 365 is pretty good. It's, it's quite directional. It's relatively bright. It shines down. With the zero, it's it's a bit wider. Um, you will need to augment and supplement the light um, on on the zero. Um, and again, real estate is going to be a bit of a problem with that because you lose this whole piece here in the middle because basically you need to get your hands in there to unscrew it to to fold the uh, the handlebars down. So. You can get extra bars and stuff and put them in that. That might be an option. Um, stem, so you're always fighting with the 365, the stem, to take the play out of it and putting little rubber dampeners in, making sure that the bolts are, are tight. 
and making sure you don't over tighten them and that's probably how I managed to sort of do my first uh, latch in the first three months was if it's too tight um, no pressure at all you should be able to um, move this lock and unlock mechanism um, without needing any more than two fingers and there should be no pressure required to get it back into place um, and again pop it back in with one finger so if it's too tight it, it stresses stuff um, you tend to want to tighten it to take any play out you will always you always get some play with them okay um, there's there's a bit of play here too but there's also a, a, a spring there etc in there um, and with the height of the the height of the of the bars, yeah. So the 365 is um, is pretty pretty high compared to say like a lime scooter, like a nine bot brand, which you can see they're they're even higher. But um, it's it's not too bad. The the zero can go a little bit higher. It can go quite a bit lower if you wish to with with that adjustment. Um, but basically, how how the the extra, the extra width helps you is that. You know, when you when you hit a bump or when you've got some sort of obstacle, um, you're not needing to go and react with your body as much. Um, I guess really a, a good way of sort of comparing the two is that with with your zero nine, you know, and like it is eighteen kilograms as opposed to twelve, it's a bit more like a barge on a, a body of water on a vessel, right? It's um, like a ferry, if you wish. Uh, it's pretty solid, it's got some momentum there, and you have a lot more confidence when you're riding, when you hit an obstacle um, with with the zero 09. So with the 365, you'll find that you know, if you're leaving a road to go up on a footpath and there's a, a bit of a ramp there, um, the front wheel will lift because you've, you've taken the weight off it as you've come up that, that dip. Um, and because you're accelerating with the front wheel, the wheel will spin. Um, so with your zero 09, I guess your motor's in the back, right? So you, you don't have that traction issue. Um, but you, you do also go from having no suspension shocks or anything at all on the 365 to having the, a spring at the front and air shocks at the back. So, you know, not full suspension, but it's um, it definitely um, helps. Not so much on the little stuff, little cracks and bumps and, you know, cobblestone road, if you wish, type stuff. Um, you still get a similar vibration and stuff floating around. Um, but with anything that's larger, so like a, a speed bump or um, significant um, holes or, or obstacles, that, that sort of size, the zero nine just gives you so much more confidence to plow through those. You know that you'll be all right. You you you're on a scooter of size that will just plow through that stuff. Um, with the three six five, you you'll get thrown around. You need to, as I say, move your your body around to to regain where you are. So um, that's probably been the m most beneficial part of doing the upgrade. Um, so we've gone down through the stem. Now obviously you've got really nice lights as well um, on here, which you can turn on. And I think that's pretty good. That helps with your, your safety of it. Um, with your 365, with your lights, uh, you know, I've had to do a tail light replacement because you get a bit of water in that. Um, so that happens there. And then the rear... Uh, I'll come back to that. I'll just I'll, I'll go around in, in um, parts of the scooter. So um, with the uh, with the display, you know, I've put in one of those um, M365 dash dashboards on here to give you your your speedo and uh, how much brake lever you're applying, which is handy. Yeah, it's got your temperature, it tells you your run time and on how long you've had it up for. How many Ks, um, the life of the, the unit's Ks, the battery percentage, um, and the 365 is really good in giving you a, a, a good indicator of your battery level 100%, 80%, etc. With the zero, um, it doesn't really factor in the load, so the motor pulling current through, and that you obviously get voltage drop when that occurs. 
So I'm saying it's got heaps of battery, but when you actually go and, and pump that out, you know, six, eight hundred watts or whatever, it's it'll say the battery's um two out of five, three out of five. So you never see that at all on the on the three six five. So you just I guess you just get used to that. That's no big issue. Alright, so um with the, the gears if you were sure that this the speed of the control. So that the three six five had um, an eco mode. And so out of the box you're doing 25 kilometers an hour. Um, if you change with a custom firmware, you'll get about 30 or so, 30 k's an hour. Um, and the motor is a, what is it, a 250 watt motor, right? Um, nominal, which uh, with the 20 amp controller that's in the Xiaomi at, uh, is it 38 volts or something like that? Um, it will, um, it will run pretty well 500 watts um, at peak. Fir change your firmware um, with a power constant of around about 33,000. Um, let's say it will flow out about 750, 800, maybe 800 watts on a uh, power constant of 30,000 and maybe that's why this motor died. Um, but yeah, your temperature on that motor would get up to about 55 degrees on the surface of the hub uh, on, a, on a warm summer's day. So anyway, we've, we've, we've got that running at a 33,000 power constant setting on the custom firmware, which delivers about, um, oh, I see it at 19.9 amps, which at 39 volts or so is about 750, 800 watts. Um, you're getting a peak in your 09 at 1200 watts. So there is more power. There may be a third more. Um, with the eco mode, it's basically half that. Yeah, half your power constant, if you wish, your, the, the power it's applied. So your acceleration stuff is slower. Um, and the, the top speed in that is, well, generally you say, Wave you've set it to in your custom firmware, but I think out of the box it's like 15 kilometers per hour, something like that. Um, with the zero, you you go from having uh, you go to have basically three um, what they call modes, um, and and that um, determines the top speed. So you can go all the way to 40, I don't know, 43, 45 kilometers an hour in in mode three, mode two is about 34. And then maybe 24 or so in, in mode one. But the interesting thing is with the zero, you get full power in all of those modes. Uh, whereas with the, the 365, if you've got it on EK, not only are you reducing that top speed, you're also reducing that the power as well. So that's where that sort of becomes relevant is if you wanted to uh, run at a slower speed in, in high pedestrian traffic areas, um, with, the, with the zero, you do that, you still have your power there and you need it with your 365 on the EK, uh, you don't. Um, and then the other stuff around it, which is sort of related to that a bit, is that, you know, putting it in, in eco mode on a 365, your throttle, you've got a bit more play there. It's a, there's a bit more easiness, I guess, to that throttle. Um, whereas uh, when you've got that full power, um, yeah, you need just to be pretty careful what you're doing with, with your throttle. So um, it's it's good to be able to have that full power available to you on all modes with the zero, um, and so I it's worthwhile using that. Whereas I never used EK mode on on the M three six five. Um, so we've got the Russian throttle as well. You might be familiar with your custom firmware on the three six five. You can change the throttle behaviour from being focused on speed um, and applying power to match speed based on where your throttle is positioned um, to the Russian throttle which disregards that and it just considers more brute force power applied based on where your throttle is. Um, the difficulty you have with the, the Russian throttle is that um, when you get up to that top speed of 30 kilometers per hour, 32, it slows down back to 30, or like it stops accelerating, it goes back to 30 and goes, oh, I need to accelerate now. And so you get this jump in speed between 30 and 32 as you're going along um, a straight se section that's nice and flat. So um, 
I've actually gone back now, I've taken off the the Russian throttle. Um, but yeah, when, when you're back to stock, you, you hit, uh, hit your throttle and you don't get power straight away. It's like the controller's getting feedback from the hall sensors to see how fast your wheel's going and going, oh, I'm going to gradually get you up to some speed, even though you've got the thing flawed on, on the accelerator, as they say. Um, so you don't get that ability to, to really shoot off, off that mark. Um, the throttle, the way it works on the Zero, I've found to be a good um, mix and balance between the, the two modes that you would have on a 365, as far as um, uh, with or without the Russian throttle. So on the three six five on the on the zero you and I had to get used to it initially and then I was fine within a day is you're using your finger to, to throttle not your thumb um, and heaps of students do that now you see them so yeah don't worry about that that's fine we'll get over that um, the the idea with with the as I say in all modes you you've got that full power when you fully pull it. It's always responsive. You can pull that lever and it's very responsive. And there's a setting in there. You can change the uh, the throttle acceleration rate or whatever it is. It's one of the P settings in, in there uh, on the on the buttons on the dash. Um, and it's three by default. And I've taken it up to four. And what four means is that um, when you do accelerate, it will apply more power, more quicker um, down to the motor. So... It, it is more responsive at the trade-off of the fact that it's a bit hey I'm, I'm going you know it's like the Jesus bum uh, level so I haven't got up to five but yeah you can from one to five that's that's your setting there um, so yeah finger on throttle always got plenty of power regardless of what mode you have on the on the zero and it tends not to want to stuff around and, and slowly bring you up to a certain speed um, it will let you have the ability to, based on where you've put that finger on the throttle, it will, it will go, yeah, I'm going to put more power in there for you because I can feel that you're wanting more on, on that. So um, that is really, that's really good. Um, all right, so hinges, hinges on, on a zero is basically, um, oh, I, the way I do it is, is to basically put some brakes on first and push forward on that to um, unlock it, that little red hinge there, and then you do need to leave your finger on it a bit, pull it back down. Now what happened is the guts of it hit the ground, some people put little cushiony things on it there, it locks in, there you go, when you're, when you're down. Now you pick it up, first time you pick it up, if you're used to an M365, don't just pick it up like you normally would, because you will whack yourself on the stand, okay, the stand's in an awesome spot. We've also, um, because you know the motor's at the back, there's more weight at the back. The channel bars stick up there a bit higher at the back. So um, you, when you pick it up, you you pick it up sort of back here as opposed to three six five. You'd be you'd be there. Um, in fact, a good way to do it is turn around and walk the other way and pick it up because there's no stand on this side. Um, do that. So to bring it back up, just release that again. So make sure it's locked in. They tell us that so you should hear it click. And that's how that's done. So, I always do a 365 tear down. It's uh, just, I will. So that's it there. And then, yeah, you just got to make sure that releases. And then you've got to line this up, right? And put that in. And ah, uh, there, there, there it is. Um, and then it, it's probably quicker and easier the 365 to get it folded and back up. I reckon, but. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's got that hinge with those three nice little parts that break for you. Um, Alright, so front wheel, I say basically the, I mentioned um, that, you know, for the little bumps they're very similar. And going from 8.5 inch tyres on the 365 out of the factory to the 10s, there's a couple of things a 10 inch tyre does. There's a 10 inch tyre on this one. Um, and there's a... Eight and a half inch tire. So oh, it's probably a bit, bit bigger once you pump it up, but that's gives me the internal diameter is always the same of course. Um, so a 10 inch tire has more rolling diameter, so there's more tire touching 
the ground. Um, it has a higher profile, so there's more opportunity for cushioning. You can generally run a 10 inch tire at a lower pressure like 35 psi. In fact, you probably can't do much more than that because they're, they're not the same thick rubber that you get from a, a Xiaomi stock tire. Um, so that gives you a bit, bit more cushioning at a trade off of um, speed and performance, I guess. Well, speed. Um, and so it's pretty important to go up to a 10 inch tire on a, if you have a 365 because you don't have any suspension there to help you. There's no shocks or springs or anything like that. So you notice the difference and that's great. When you go to a 09, which is, uh, you know, it's called a 9, but they're an 8.5 inch um, tire and they're a better, I think they're a better tire. They look they look better um, than a, a, a 365 8.5 inch tire anyway, as far as the tread pattern goes and stuff. Um, because you've got this, the shocks overall, those little bumps is about the same, if not a little bit better, easier, uh, more comfortable to ride on a zero nine. Um, but it's as I say, the, those big things you hit, um, large obstacles, uh, confidence, anything really above thirty kilometres per hour, it's easier um, to navigate those on a zero nine. So. I don't feel wanting for bigger tyres on a, on a 09. Um, going up to a 010 would certainly give you the, the 10 inch tyres, but then you're adding another 7, 8 kilograms of weight. It's just, it's too, it's not practical to be able to lift that up and, uh, you know, commute with it in the train um, or heavens forbid a bus um, or even really just taking up if you've got to go stairs or even carry it through the office. Sometimes you, it's, you know, Places don't like you carrying scooters or wheeling scooters through their carpet in the office. Um, so yeah, it does have it does have there. Um, so yeah, back to the front wheel. Um, and actually, I've actually got a tubeless tire in the front of that when they replaced the motor. They did a, a tubeless tire. So um, yeah, I've probably had to replace six or so punches in two and a half thousand kilometres. So once every couple of months is a replacement. But that all sort of seemed to stop. Um, once we put the Mr. Tuffy in, which is your your tire liners, um, and that just stopped anything piercing through the um, outer tire into the tube. Um, the the other thing too is you know when you put your tube in, is you make sure you've got some uh, baby powder or talc, whatever you want to call it. You stick that in, and that um, helps prevent the tube from breaking as um, it it slides uh, on the tire. You know, when you when your tire hits a, an obstacle, the tire pushes in. That tube um, tends to get moved a bit, and it rubs. And that rubbing is what um, I think they're called split punches or something, and they wear out the um, the inner tube. So with the tubes too, like and you know, reputable seller, ten inch tires for the three six five. But the tube they send is still an eight and a half inch, which is probably all right. As I say, the internal damage is fine, but when you pump them up, they're getting stretched. And uh, the Elmi Bay ones are probably pretty popular too, and they they feel a bit thicker. Um, but I don't think they were the ten inch. There's a ten. I mean, you can see the difference. There's a ten inch, ten inch tube there, and comparing that to like an eight eight and a half inch tube. There's quite a size difference, so yeah. When you pump this thing up and stretch it out, mm, there's, a, there's a bit of pressure on it. So maybe we should make sure you've actually got 10 inch tubes when you get 10 inch tires. They're a bit hard to get in and stuff because they're, they're bigger. Stick them in. So anyway, it, it's it's been pretty good. Um, the 10 inch tires, which are um, pretty much there's only a few options, but the uh, I forget what they're called. There's a logo on it, WD wise or something like that they're called. Anyway, they're um they wear out pretty quickly, right? Particularly if you've got them in the front where your motor is. Um probably about a third uh running duration. Um uh, six hundred kilometers say um and, and they're sort of worn out whereas your your stock Xiaomi ones are nice thick rubber uh they're like 2,000, 2,500 kilometers. So um, I think these 10 inch ones, they quote about 1,000 um, kilometers. And you yeah, probably would on the back, but um, no, not on the front. And 
that's pretty significant. Like I've I've racked up a hundred kilometers on my new scooter in the last week, right? And so, you know, after six weeks of doing that, to to run out of uh, rubber on your front tire is like you know, ten inches. There. There's a bit of an effort there on a three six five to to get them going. So, um, yeah, lower lower maintenance costs. It's you, you basically you're uh, not having to mess around with with tires. Um, so. That's where we are up the up the front end, I think. Um, there's also a, um, I guess you know the rear motor being twelve hundred watts um, gets about as warm as our three six five motor that I've got on the, at seven hundred watts. Uh, just when you touch it and feel the temperature, they're, they're pretty similar. But this is delivering about 30-40% more power. So, um, yeah, no no issues with, with heat in them at all. Um, Alright, so there's two other scooters I was looking at. There was like a the wide wheel um, and there was a, a Speedway 4, I think. Speedway 4, you know, had, had the, the, the power and the speed and... I think it had some springs on it, but it didn't have like, you know, two sets of brakes, so they only had one, um, etc. which, you know, today I needed, like, to use two brakes as well. So, um, with the 365, when you hit the brake, uh, the motor can regen. Uh, so the motor being up the front can regen. It also, the cable pulls a caliper, which is just a, a, a physical caliper, onto a disc, uh, okay, so, and it pulls it only on one side as well, by the way, so, um, it, it'll, it'll lock up if you've got it tuned exactly right, you know, and it's not rubbing and stuff, it is, but it's a bit of a pain in the bum, pretty high maintenance to get it to actually be just, just right. Um, the occurs braking, you can't really change that, although I've noticed when you change your motor constant to crank more power into it on your custom firmware, it, it does also apply in reverse to your curves as well. Um, so when you do brake, it's like the curves kicks in a bit more aggressively and then it's like, oh, hang on, I'm doing too much and it, and it can stop or it can kick back or that, that was my experience. It could have been the motor was on the way up, but it was like that for like three, six months. So um, yeah, braking's always been a bit, oh, hang on, are we going to, we, you don't know exactly when you're going to be pulling up. It's, it's not as consistent. So with the, the zero, um, on the rear, you still have your curves braking, and you can adjust the, the strength of the curves braking. There's like four settings, which you can, or five settings or so, that you can adjust on there. Um, I think I've set it at three, it's in the middle, it's, it's fine. The, the curves braking uh, on this only really applies for when you're doing more than 10 kilometers per hour. So once you slow down, um, down to and you go through 10 kilometers per hour you'll hear it disengage its curves braking and you're just using the the, the, um, the cable brakes um, which which is fine um, rear brake uh, is a cable on a drum pulls up pretty well I reckon it's fine front brake is similar to what the Xiaomi has on the rear uh, that is a cable through to a um, manual, manual brake. Reasonable size discs. Um, that's the size of the discs there. So I think they're one, yeah, 120 millimeters. So I've put a, the standard 365 disc looks like that. It's 110 mil. Oh, it's a factory one, I think. Right, I might have changed it a bit, but that's still what it is. Ferry in Russia sent over a same size. About better dips, so better venting, uh, more surface area, and that sort of stuff. Um, when the Pro came out, the M365 Pro, the 120 mm disc became available with that configuration to stick on, and you can stick on a X Tech Calibre uh, semi hydraulic um, on there. With you'll need a bracket, and I've 3D printed some brackets, so I can put it on. I'm not in any rush, but uh, that's sort of as much as you can do to upgrade those those brakes and, and when it when the caliper applies it applies to both sides with the disc in the middle both sides there is stock it only pulls on one side 
and it just rubs up against the other and, and that's how that works. Um, never had to replace any this, uh, pads on the 365. Um, so yeah, basically uh, pulling up, yeah you've got you've got two so two hands, two uh, leaders to, to, to pull them. Uh, I guess it's sort of a little bit easy, it's easy to do the rear because that hand, that's all it can really do, whereas the front's doing an accelerator as well. Um, but yeah, you can you can really hit the, the picks and, and pull it up um, pretty pretty well, which is what, what you need. Um, the other thing of, while I was up here with the ammo bars is that um, one of these always goes a little bit loose and I have to tighten it, tighten it up. Okay, and you get, then you go and ride for a couple of k's and it's loose again. So I need to, I don't know, put a bit of, bit of um, rope or something in there um, for it so when it ties up it's got something to bite against and, and locks it in a bit. The other side's alright, it's, well it's not too bad, but yeah, it's mainly just that one, that one side. Um, alright, so basically we've, we've uh, taken ourselves down to the rear. Now with the 365 you will you will probably break your rear fender in time because there's not much support. It's just got three pins in, in it, uh, three screws to, to screw it in. So you can get some brackets. This one's an, an aluminium or steel bracket here. They're probably, you know, 10, 15 bucks. Stick that on. Might replace it again, that's fine. Um, it also gives the cable a bit of protection as well, that brake light cable, because that brake light cable um, through there can, can run. Um, as I say, I had replaced that light, the rear light, because it had water in it. Um, I've ridden through a little bit of rain in, in the 365, not heavy rain, just a, just a light shower. Um, apparently you shouldn't really be doing much of that at all uh, on a zero nine because there is not much water creek in there at all. Um, so ideally, yeah, I think that's similar to that. So basically that, the trip, the 22 minute trip to get to work has come down to about 15, 16 minutes. Um, in part, you know, because there's a, there's a, a quicker speed, it's a, the top speed is, is higher, but also um, because you, you basically have a lot more power there. So um, Story Bridge, bridge in, in, in the city it has a slight angle, slight hill to it, I don't know what the gradient is, Could, it might only be 5% whatever um, and you'll go 20 km per hour roughly on, on the 365 whereas you'll hit 30 pretty comfortably. Um, going up a, a steep hill this thing slides down to walking pace and really struggles, might be like 8 km per hour or so. Um, there aren't any hills where this doesn't get up on the way to work, but yeah, like around East Brisbane way, there's New Shafton, there, there's some there's some hills. So those ones there are sort of about eight kilometres an hour, whereas this one's probably about double that at sixteen. So um, the the difference in top speed, I mean, this this has a lot more power, um, particularly at lower speeds, right? Whereas when you know when you get this up to about 30, 35 kilometres per hour. You need a lot more open, straight, flat, um, no wind much really to, to get the, the higher speeds out of it. Whereas this one sort of it'll it'll get to twenty five and and so oh, that's it. I'm, I can't go up to thirty because of, there's too much wind oncoming or something like that. So um, yeah, there's there's just more consistent uh, higher speed um, to meet on it. I guess so. Um, I think that's probably as many of the thoughts that I can that I can give you. Um, deck size, uh, you pretty skinny on the three six five at fifteen centimeters versus nineteen, so a little bit wider. Um, <clears throat> the length, and if you just go between here, like the usable length is forty one versus uh, fifty. You know, and you can actually hang over the back a bit of that fifty as well. Uh, so you know, twenty percent more width, twenty percent more um, uh, width and uh, length in in the deck, which helps. Um, yeah. So if there's any other questions, you can throw them in as a comment on YouTube, and I'll put this one on the um, scooters 
uh, on Reddit there as well, I think. Um, yeah, that's I think that's pretty much as much as I want to share. Hope you've enjoyed. It's a uh, probably a good upgrade option. A lot of people have got one of these. Thinking about something like that. Hope this helps you uh, sort of appreciate the investment you might get out of the upgrade. Take care. See ya.